When Andy first told me to join the Marines, I was like, you idiot. I got that reaction a lot. This is back in 1987. Andy and I had grown up together in Northern California, and we'd graduated from high school the year before. I was in it for the adventure and to play with Uncle Sam's toys. Back then, it seemed like America wasn't going to get in any more wars. Vietnam was still a recent memory. After boot camp, I went to communication school to learn to be a radioman. Then I had a few years of normal reserve experience. You know, like they tell you, one week in a month, two weeks in the summer. Then all of a sudden, it's the Gulf War, and I'm mailing him care packages with magazines and food, plus pantyhose to protect his M16 from the sand. A lot of people thought the Gulf War was a joke, but my experience was a little bit different. We were running targeting missions along the border during the air campaign. That brought us into contact with the Iraqis on several occasions. I was attached to a brigade made up of Kuwaitis, Qataris, Moroccan, and Saudis, all the Middle Eastern forces. When the Iraqis invaded the Saudi town of Kofji, we pushed them out and took the town back. Andy and I went out drinking the night he got back from the Gulf War. The stories he told me were pretty wild and a lot different than anything I'd read in the newspaper. But I could sense back then that Andy was going to make a career out of the Marines, so I knew it would probably have to wait. I got commissioned, finished flight school, did a couple world tours as a Huey pilot. Ended up flying missions in Kosovo, and then 9-11 happened. I just received orders to be a flight instructor, so I spent the next three years teaching guys how to fly the Huey in combat by day and trying to find my way back to the operational forces by night. In 2004, I got orders back to the grunts in Iraq to do almost the same thing I'd done in the Gulf War. The technology had drastically changed, I had drastically changed. I had grown up, really. I was now a major instead of a corporal. I was a pilot instead of a radioman. My perspective, experience, skills, and knowledge had obviously grown. Fallujah was the biggest urban marine battle since Way City in Vietnam. We had almost a division of Marines fighting over 2,000 bad guys in less than 15 square kilometers. The density, the proximities, it was crazy. And I was running all the air support. Every three to four minutes, we were dropping a bomb. I did two tours of Iraq and one in Afghanistan before I retired. Most of the stuff written by veterans seems to focus on one conflict, one deployment, or one battle. What makes Andy's story interesting is you get the full arc over a period of 25 years. You get an inside look at how the military goes from low tech to high tech and how the force changes dramatically after 9-11. When I meet people not in military circles, they always ask, well, what was it like? Well, here's the answer. 